Stop right there. Yeah, you. If you like all things entertainment, current events, or Hollywood, then look no further. Creator to Creators, hosted by director Mio Shabin of Horror Noir, interviews filmmakers and creatives from around the world. Join in on the fun, guest celebrities, and informative information to have as a creator. Hit subscribe and stay connected to Creator to Creators. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Creators to Creators Today. Today, we have a special guest. Curtis Hudson. Gray Hudson. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and that's from the group Pure Energy, musical yes. band Pure Energy. Yes. Yes. I'm super excited to talk to you. Um, tell me, I love, I, first of all, you know, let, let's, I just got to pay homage to all that, that you guys has have done uh, to, for music and the culture. I mean, timeless music and, you know, being in this business for so long and, you know, the longevity of it all. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you. Definitely. Um, but I love going back to the beginning. And I always, I always say the beginning kind of charged our like trajectory of where we're going to be heading in life. Tell me a little bit about, you know, your childhood um, and, and kind of like growing up and, and then finding, you know, your way into music. Well, uh, Ray and I are brothers um, and we grew up and was raised in a small town in Louisiana called Mansfield. And we grew up around music. All our relatives was musicians, singers, and church mostly. Um, we have um, a cousin of, of, of ours who was a famous singer named O.C. Smith, um, who had out a real popular song back in the, the, the late 60s, uh, I think. Yeah. yeah like God didn't bless then make little green apples. Right. <laughs> it, was, it, it was a million seller, but he was out of town all the time. So we didn't get a chance to see him. He would come through every once in a while, but we always hear these stories of him. So uh, we right. come from a musical background. I love yeah. that. Yeah, grew up playing music, started out playing music when we were very young. And um, we just found the love and the passion for playing and doing music. So we continue that all through high school and you know so forth I, I love that I, I think that's beautiful that you just you, you just basically you knew what you wanted to do at an early age and I think a lot of people don't know that um, they're still trying to figure out what their purpose is and or what they're trying to do in life um, I think that's awesome yes yeah, yeah we, we, we when I first heard we, um, we always do uh, Smokey Robinson, uh, some of his early songs in the 60s, because um, Ray and I, we were born in the 50s, so that's how old we are. Um, <laughs> and I, I first heard the, the Motown stuff. I just knew it was something about writing songs or something I wanted to do in music. Yeah, I, I think that's brilliant. Let's talk about your new song. Midnight Magic. Um, I love this song. Uh, it felt like a fresh, like modern, like, I don't know, it just felt like old, old school, but also modern at the same time. And I felt like this, <laughs> like, I felt like it, I, it, even though I wasn't born in the time of like um, Soul Train, I just felt like I wish I like that, that <laughs> felt like that, like that vibe, like we're going down and like dance down this, like just have a good time. Um, tell me a little bit about the process of making that and, and, Midnight Magic, like the title, like how did you guys come up with that? Wow, you got it. I mean, yep. when you, what you just <laughs> said, you kept, you got everything we were trying to. Exactly, uh, exactly. Get people to feel in that song. You got it perfectly. Uh, well, Midnight Magic uh, was reading uh, the lyrics and, and and the title came from Lisa Stevens Crowder, the, the lead vocalist. Lead vocalist, um, right. And she, you know, when we was playing a lot of the, the nightclubs, it seemed like people really start to party after 12. So she came up with the idea of midnight, the magic happens at midnight. So mm -hmm. um, I just put some music to it and uh, we cut, Ray and I cut the, the tracks, you know, and made it fun, fun. You know, that's what we always try to do, music that made people feel better, uplift them in some kind of way. Oh yeah, right. I think 
I, I love that because, you know, we're living in such a weird, crazy time. And I think people need music to get away, like escape the the exactly. problems that's going on in the world. Like, so this, this is it. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I, we, <clears throat> I'm sorry. We were, I don't know if you was aware that uh, we also did Holiday for Madonna, which was Madonna's first uh, major hit song. And it kind of right. launched, launched Madonna's career. Um to uh I don't know if you're familiar with that song Holiday, but yes. it, has, it has the same feeling, you know, and that was the message in Holiday was to make people feel better, you know, lift. I got the idea from watching the, the the television, the news was on and people everything was so depressed. So I just came up with a song like if we could take one day out of life and just mm -hmm. get out of just party and feel better, that would be a great right. thing. Right. And that's how Holiday came about. Yeah, I was actually going to ask you about about that. I mean, you guys oh, were. Sorry. I didn't mean to jump. To <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. <laughs> um, I, uh, I I I found that very that was very interesting, and and you know the fact. I mean, all the people that you've like all like between all of you who you've worked with and collaborate with, it's pretty amazing. Um, uh, list of people <laughs> like wow. Um, yeah. but the Madonna story, like, and then the fact that you you wrote it, and then you guys wanted to go ahead and like try to you know take it yourself, but then the, the record label said no. But then it worked for Madonna, and it was a hit for her. How, do you feel like the music industry is changing? Um, and or, or has changed a lot for the better now, even now, like from from what it was then to what it is now. Well, I. I I, I will say that it has changed somewhat. Um, I guess that's just keeping up with the, the time, so to speak, and um, the type of music that people is choosing to put out has a lot to do with it too. Um, uh, our group tried to stay loyal to what our sound was uh, mm. back even in the 80s and so forth. We we tried very, made sure that we wanted to keep our sound even here in 2023 with Midnight Magic. Uh, all real instruments, horns, and the whole nine yards of what they used to do back in the day, the old school band. So we just decided to just say, let's just put this out because we love what we're doing. We hope people will like it and um, stay true to ourselves and to our sound. So that's that's what we tried to do. And I think we accomplished that. Yeah, and I think uh, in some other, other ways this changes how music is uh, distributed and put out. You can pretty much put out your own music without record labels. And, uh, and in a lot of ways, that's good because you, you get music that you wouldn't normally hear. Um, in some ways, it's not so good. Um, mm -hmm. because you have so much music out there. I, don't, I think people sometimes can't even decide what to listen to. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a control, more of a control thing uh, early on in the 60s and 70s. So only the best music, I, I, if I could actually say that, I, I'm, I'm just, you know, for lack of a better word. But you got Marvin Gaye, James Brown. I mean, to get a hit record back then, you had to really come with something extra to yeah, even get right. in the door. You know, but now you can put out music and... You know, it just, it just go without even having a lot of quality or uh, mm -hmm. lyrical content. You know, it can just be a little vibe or drum groove and right. hit. Right. So, so much have changed in that essence. So you can get more music out there, but I think sometimes the quality of the music is not quite there. Right, right. I I, I absolutely agree. I think that you're, you're, I think it's super saturated. And, and I mean, even now, like you said, the music I and mean, you could be in your basement and put a song out on spotify and then it blows up and you're exactly. like whoa yeah. <laughs> it's like what was that done <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's so different now i mean um we came through the era where you had to be good mm -hmm. not just good you had to be like great almost because the competition was and i don't think um a lot of the young people really understand that Mm -hmm. Because like in New York, New Jersey, Chicago, every major city, you had dozens and dozens of bands that was great. So your competition right. was high level. Singers could sing. So if you're going to get on stage and, and really kill, somebody else could come up there and really wipe you out. So you mm -hmm. had that kind of competition. Now, I think the, the, ta the people don't focus so much on the talent and the development of your skills. They just focus on how to market themselves. 
So they're able to come up with things that maybe could sell through their personality or the mm -hmm. way they dress or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the quality, the talent of it, you know, they don't spend time on that stuff. So yeah, that's kind of missing to me. It, I, are we I, hoping, I, you, we, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, but you know, like, um, we are hoping that uh, some way that we can kind of like ease or get back into some of the, the, the I want to say good music or all music is good, but mm -hmm. the sounds of what, what music used to be um, back in the 80s or 70s or whatever. And um, it, it's going to take a little while because everything is like turned around now, but I think there's a few people that started to trying to make that move back yeah. toward original R&B music and so forth where that is everything is not synthesized or everything is not sampled and all of that kind of stuff so we, we we hope that it will continue to get back because I think a lot of people do enjoy um the old school music it's just have to put a new twist on it and that's one of the reasons why we uh brought uh Curtis and Lisa's son Eric Hudson in to um work with us on Midnight Magic uh, that's their son. Kurt, you can speak more about Eric. Yeah, yeah, but, but I want to say before I go to that, that, uh, that yeah, there's a lot of good music mm -hmm. out there. And some great artists, I see them sometimes just on social media here. They don't have the backing. They might not have the, the financial backing to get that music to the forefront, but there are some, some great artists that I'm hearing, but it's sort of like bubbling underground, you know, um, but to, to Raymond's point of uh, us working with uh, our son, Eric Hudson, he's a producer. He they did Flashing Lights for Kanye West. Uh, nice. He worked with, I mean, everybody in the industry. Um, so pretty he, much, pretty much. he came in and, um, and kind of put the modern vibe on, on uh, an 80s song because Midnight Magic was actually written back in the 80s. And we didn't change anything. We kept the same groove, everything. Wow. Was there. He was like, dad, don't change it. I'm just going to put some sweetening on it and just give it the, the sonics of today. But don't change any of your arrangements, your vocals. So we didn't change anything about the song. Wow. Um, he, he was able to bring that more. That's why you say it sounds like old school, but it sounds modern. That was his element there. Wow. Wow, it's right. a family affair. I love that. <laughs> I love oh, yeah. it. That's beautiful. I, I, it's, I mean, it's so good. It's so good. And, you know, I, I, I can see it played, in, you know, even it, I, when I was listening to it, I, was, I could even say it play, played in movies, like, as, like, wow. you know, I can see that, too. Like, I was like, wow, it sounds really good. Right there. You got some great insights. We've heard that from several other uh, right industry right. this would be great for movie or tv or whatever so yeah. hopefully hopefully people hopefully. get into it and it'll you know just keep going out we just want to put well you know we, great music out. Movie. right and so far you know the song has been out now just a little bit over two weeks and um the feedback has been really really great so far and um i i, I think the last time i checked is on the emerging 100 charts at number five so wow you know we we happy we happy about that and um uh, you know we just hope it continue to grow that's what we would like to do for it to continue to grow and i think the more people who listen to it uh mm -hmm. seems to like it so that's a positive yeah. for us so it help us you know keep going forward yeah and even if the song doesn't be like a mega hit or whatever um and it expires some other young artists hear that sound and they're like, wow, I like this vibe. I'm do something like that. You get other artists and then, you know, you kind of like get more and more music like Midnight Magic being produced. So mm -hmm. even if it, if it accomplished that, that's a great thing. Absolutely. And, right. it, and it will, and it will. Definitely. I was going to say also, you know, I appreciate uh, the, the visuals as well. I mean, I, I have a background in film. So I, when I saw the music video, I, I really lo I loved how you guys shot that. It looks it was it was so fun and all the all the people dancing and just you guys on stage and get down. It was I love the it was a very fun, like visually appealing video. So kudos and to that you. Was, that was to a, a, a great young director named Bart. That's what he right. goes for, B A R T. Uh, he that's all his vision. Nice. Uh, he came up right. with that. Uh, 
Very creative young man. Very creative young man. Love that. So I, I love asking this question, and, and there's no wrong answer, um, but the three levels of influence, money, power, and respect. And if you could choose one of those things, which one would you choose and why? For me, respect. Yeah, I, w- I would say respect. I, also. I, I think, yeah, I think if, if, if whatever you're doing, whether it's music or whatever, you, I think it's more important to be respected for what you're doing. And um and people kind of like give you your just due if you're doing it, uh, you know, with, with uh, on a professional level. Actually, that is so. I, for me, I think I, I'd rather have the respect first. The the other money two, is always good. Yeah, the the other one was money and power. It was the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And see, respect, money, yes. money comes and goes, and power to me, there's no such thing as as that. It's only if you could, you know, exercise it over someone is only when you have power. So I don't even look at to, to control anybody or have power to do anything besides just make great music. So I think if people respect, you know, people hear honesty in music. Mm-hmm. Right. I, always feel, I always felt that. So if you write a lyric and you're really writing it from a good place and you're trying to motivate someone, inform someone, because that's what music to me is about. It's informing people, it's making people feel better, you know. Happy. You know, that's the main focus of music. It's a lot deeper than the commercial things that we're doing. It goes back to ancient times where music had a purpose. So Mm -hmm. it's a form of communicating on a high level and we can choose to make it, you know, trashy or whatever, uh, trendy or whatever, we can take it and and really motivate and change the world. That's the only thing, and I, I don't, I try not to get too political or whatever. It's okay, but, you can. Uh, sometimes you can <laughs> yeah. stay away from, but that the power, if you mention it back to that word power, that a lot of the young people have and the influence, they have millions and millions and millions of viewers and followers. Mm-hmm. If they put a message out that was so that could change the world, imagine how how powerful that would be. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. so I, I think when you come to a power, that would be powerful if a message went out that really changed things in the mm-hmm. world. Mm-hmm. I would love to see an artist come along today that have uh, 50 million uh, followers but put out a message that really make a difference and make every young person stop and think about, wow, what am I doing with my right. life? Right. Love that. Do you think that any, any artists now that, that do you think like you can look at e- whether it's a female or male um, that is relatively, I guess is, is putting out that message for young people. Is there um, any artists out there you can name? Uh, maybe, maybe a, I can't really. Yeah. Think Which, what, a couple artists are staying away from politics or they're staying right. away from things that that make people even think they, they just want to put out music they, they think are sell or, or, yeah. or stream. so I think because of the record labels or what they are doing now I think artists are afraid to do that you know yeah that's true but, but I think there's a lot of positive music also I mean you know there's a lot of positive music coming from from a lot of good people uh I just think it has to be you know put on a on a larger scale and, mm. and 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 people can catch on a little bit more so but there mm. there are some positive songs that out there that people are trying to do to um you know make people think not just party and have a good time but that's something to think about so I, 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 it is but you know, it's gotta yeah. continue it's gotta continue absolutely what like you know i know that we're out of the pandemic now and everybody's kind of back to somewhat normalcy um, was, you know, now that like everything is, uh, you know, I guess for me, like I, I was very like, um, not really motivated during that time. And I was like, oh my gosh, what am, what am, what am I going to do for me? It's like, I don't want to ever experience that again. I don't, I would not, I, you know, I, I'm so glad that we're past that, but how, how do you guys get, how do you guys, what makes you guys, you know, keep going even during like rough times, like times where you're not really sure, like you're not motivated. What keeps you go? What keeps you guys going? <clears throat> well, well, for me, I, 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 I think go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
Uh, I stay locked uh, up in my studio. <laughs> that's what. That's <laughs> what. That's what, what I. Is. That's what I do all the time. Uh, well, this you know whatever's going on, I you know um, I stay in my studio uh, creating. That's that's how that's my therapy for myself. Nice. Right, and we was all doing the same. The pandemic, you know, I agree with you. I, I hope we never have to face anything close to that ever again. But um, like I said, that was months and months. Like, uh, Curtis and I, we brothers, we we didn't see each other. We talked to each other every day, but everybody was just like, let's just chill out, let's stay home, and let's just hope this stuff pass by. But we was constantly doing music, communicating, uh, you know, music, music wise, and so wow. forth. And I think when we were trying to choose the the Midnight Magic for the first release, we during the pandemic, we were just sending each other some of the songs that we had written in the past, mm. and um, we spent months on that just trying to figure out, okay, if we're gonna do this, let's let's start listening to some of the songs in our vault to see what would be the first release. And we was doing all that during the pandemic and so forth. So wow. we were still doing music. That's we awesome. were still doing music just in just couldn't go into the studio like we used to so um it was it, it, it was good I, th I think Curtis can remember like we did um uh that was a what was that called the story of the song the song the story behind the songs Kurt oh yeah that was a documentary Curtis. about Madonna that um documentary that was done from a and that was doing the a British production company. yeah that was doing the pandemic and it was done, it, it uh, they sent cameras and everything out during the pandemic because it was on this this documentary on Madonna and we was a part of it. Nice. And um, it, it was like the camera people, everybody came and dropped. We were like, okay, put it at the door, set it up. <laughs> you know, yeah. it, was, it was supposed it was, to be, it was, um, it was, it, it was supposed to be done like in a big studio, uh, you know, the way they do documentaries, but the pandemic hit all of a sudden, and they put all these uh, restrictions. So they wanted to continue with the documentary. So they, you have to sign all these forms about uh, COVID uh, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, all these consent forms. Then they sent a film crew and delivered this stuff and everything all wiped off. I mean, it was crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah. And they remotely, they remotely did everything remotely. So wow, um, right. thanks to the technology. Um, but it, when you look at the documentary, it, it was like the, we was actually there with a film crew and everything. But I think uh, Raymond's wife was working the camera and my wife was working my camera. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it, it was yeah, crazy. Right. The technology they have now. But yeah, the pandemic was, was really... Uh, it just threw everybody for a loop. But I just created, and hopefully some of the music that I have that I want to really give to the world, that I'll be able to give some of that music. Because I wrote music, you know, that's more motivating message music. Nice. Um, and we didn't put, you know, we're not putting any of that out right now. We're trying to just test the water and see. But uh, I, w I would love to get some of that music out that I think will motivate the world, might influence some young people to just think twice about some of the decisions that they're, they're making. 100%. Right, right. 100%. Do you feel like you guys have, I mean, you know, you hear this question, I mean, at least I hear this question a lot, but um, I like to ask this to everyone and I'm sure it's different for everyone, but um, do you feel like you guys found your purpose in life? Oh yeah. I know for a fact I, yeah. I, I did a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that. I love right. that. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful. Time ago, I knew um, it's two things happened to me in my life. And that was when I was about 12, uh, 13 years old, I was playing with a gospel group. I hadn't, I just had started learning to play the guitar. And um, this older gentleman that lived in my neighborhood said, um, I want you to come play with us. And I was so afraid. I'm like, no, I'm not good enough to play with anybody. It was a gospel group. And he was like, so demanding. Come on, no, you could do it and, and encouraging. So I went to rehearsal that Wednesday and I just thought I was just going to see what I could do. That Sunday, they had a concert. And he was like, you're going to play Sunday. I'm like, no way. <laughs> so so they, they encouraged me and said, I ought to be fine. And I was shaking I was, my leg was shaking, so I couldn't even stop shaking for playing. So once I hit the first note on the on the, uh, the guitar, 
And I saw my auntie was sitting in the audience and she smiled at me and said, that's my nephew. <laughs> Something came over me where everything just sort of like relaxed and I start playing. And that was it. I felt that feeling. And the same thing happened when I was about maybe 16, when I started on nightclubs, I played in my first nightclub. I was again, afraid to be on stage and all these people. And something when I heard that one chord that the band hit, I just knew that that's what I was gonna do the rest of my life. I love that. Right, that's and Curtis sweet. and I, we, we we started out, we we played, you know, like in our school days and high school and stuff, we played gospel music for, for all through high school. I love you that. Know, we, we, that's, that's, that, that's who we were born down in the South and our, hometown gospel music was very popular and um we just started playing gospel music with with different um churches and so forth and we we did it for years and years and years so we, yeah, we actually, I, about that. actually um, i was playing gospel music and what they called then the devil's music <laughs> <laughs> so that's what some I, called it i was doing i was doing both you know so i was, I was I would get reprimanded by, by church people and say, you need to stop playing that devil music. <laughs> I said, well, the devil music is helping putting food on the table for my mom. <laughs> we got eight kids in my family, so I put some food on the table, so me, maybe God want me to make that money. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! So, that's so I went, hilarious. Yeah, I, went through all that. I was playing both sides of it. What they say, you straddle the fence. You play. Right. <laughs> you go to the nightclubs on Saturday, then you go to the club. I mean, the church on Sunday. Play at church on Sunday. But I felt, I felt I wasn't doing anything wrong. I was playing. They both was music to me, and it's just the lyrics change. You know, uh, one. One thing is talking about having a good time or maybe talking about, you know, loving a woman. And the other one is just talking about God and, you know, and Jesus. Right. Yeah. So I just felt the music was the same to me. I didn't, you know, I didn't feel any different, but I got reprimanded for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> we was young, but we was young. We was in high, high school and so forth. So we was young. It, yeah. You know, thinking like that. <laughs> I'm working you... on my book one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to read it. Well, which brings me to my next question. So, you know, you get to the, you, you've, your work is done on earth. You get to the pearly gates of heaven and you meet God. What would you, what do you guys want God to say about the things you've done? I would like for God to say, well done for me. I, I would just like for him to say, well, which means he's happy with what I've tried to accomplish while I'm here and how much I gave back, you know, um myself of everything that I tried to do and and that's that's rewarding for me you know because none of us are perfect but you have to try to make an effort to do good as much as you can so I, I would hope that he would say well done love that yeah the same with me and I, I think I can look God in the face and say that the talents and gifts you gave me I used it to the best of my ability and I use it for good purposes I, I didn't use it maliciously. I wasn't greedy with it, you know, so I think I could be comfortable with saying that every song I write, it comes from a good place. Yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I have one last question and and that's it. Um, any, so for the, for those that are uh, listening, like, you know, young people, whether in anyone that wants to get into music, what advice would you give? And we have literally seven minutes left, but what advice would you give to them? Real quick, Ray, go. Uh, stay true to your craft. Work hard at your craft, and um, you you should be okay. You have to be be honest with what you really want to, your uh, music to be. So I think that's the main thing that people need to do. Well, I'm gonna say first, love what you're doing because you never know which direction it's gonna go. It's gonna be ups and downs. So you have to love it to continue if you have disappointments and failures i love that that's beautiful thank you so much thank oh, well, you so before we much. go i just wanted to the, the audience to know that lisa stevens crowd our lead singer is uh, right. under the weather and she's not here but um hopefully um people is enjoying her great vocals on midnight magic right and thank you for loving Midnight Magic. Thank you. Yes, thank you for having us. It's, it's thank a you. pleasure. I, you know, and, and seeing you is actually rounds it off. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Well, thank you so much for making, you know, timeless music and, you know, something for 
everyone. So thank yes. you guys. Thank you. And I hope she, you. you're, you're the vocalist. She feels better. And again, come back anytime. Oh, thank you. Anytime you want us, we're happy. Thank you so much. Yeah, anytime. Let us know. All right. Thank you. All right. And, and thank you all for listening. And always remember to live, love, laugh. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.